Hey, this is Eric, also known as on GoSub. This is a tutorial on how to make a uh, 2D platformer using Unity 5. I happen to be using a Mac. Uh, if you use a Mac, this should help because uh, not all the tutorials are for Macs. You may have tried to uh, look at videos on YouTube or re read through some tutorials, and you may have found that the two stuff that was made for Unity 4 or earlier actually doesn't work with Unity 5 or the scripts don't work, um, and if you're new to Unity, you may not actually know how to fix the problems that are in those tutorials. So I'm going to start from scratch using Unity 5, where I'm on a Mac. We're going to use some uh, open game assets, some public domain assets for our images and probably for our sounds. <clears throat> We're going to use two different scripting languages. I'm going to actually split the tutorial up after this one. One section is going to be for uh, JavaScript, uh, also known as Unity Script, because it's a little bit different. And the other one's going to be for C Sharp. So the two scripting languages will generate pretty much the same platformer, but uh, I'll show you how to use both. And um, you can follow along and use your favorite. Some people have reasons for using C Sharp. Uh, maybe they're familiar with it. Maybe they like actually having declared variable types and things like that. <clears throat> um, some people like JavaScript, maybe come from a web background. Um, you know, there's ways to avoid the problems that you have with uh, declared variables um, using strict and things like that. So we, we can talk about that later. Um, but for right now, this tutorial is going to be about setting up Unity, creating some folders, creating your first scene, and actually uh, importing some art that we're going to use for the game uh, from uh, open game art. So <clears throat> let's get right to it. First thing you need to do is go to Unity, get that downloaded. You probably already have this. Um, if you go to, if you're signed up, you can actually go to uh, Unity3D right here, dot com. Get Unity. There's two versions: professional and personal. If you're just starting to develop your games and just kind of want to play with it um, and actually you know maybe make some stuff for the web or something like that uh, you just go right ahead and download the, the personal edition uh, it'll give you everything that you need for this tutorial <clears throat> so I've already downloaded that go ahead and run it install it um, get it in your dashboard so you know you've got these three things added after the installation mono develop which is a script editing tool so if you actually do the typing of the scripts a bug reporter, and this is the real Unity right here. This is the one you're going to want to run. So when you go ahead and run Unity, you'll get a screen similar to this. I've actually started the demo to, to kind of work ahead, and yours will be blank. But go ahead and create a new project once you've downloaded and installed Unity. Make sure you select 2D. Um, this is one of the screens that's different from the old, you know, the earlier versions of Unity. But go ahead and make sure you select 2D because we're going to be making a 2D platformer. I'm going to call this 2D platformer demo, and I'm I'm storing it in my. I have I have a path here. You can actually navigate out using the ellipses to actually get to another folder if you want to. <clears throat> go ahead and create your project. My computer probably wants more RAM. Needs a little upgrade, but we're getting there. Unity's going to open up in its default window arrangement. There we go. Welcome to Unity 5. So you can see we have an untitled scene, and we're running the 2D platformer demo game. This is a list of objects that are in your scene right here. This is the scene itself. This is a list of objects that are in it. For example, the main camera is right there. This is the camera. And here's a little preview of what the game looks like. This is the inspector. This shows you all the details about the object that you've selected over here in the hierarchy. In this case, our camera is just a, showing a blue background. Actually, you know, I'm going to make this uh, 
first thing we're going to do is I'm going to actually change this, this little background to a different color. Something a, more, a little more like a game sky. Um, and I'm going to use the RGB values here that are of a named color uh, in HTML. This is actually a uh, light sky. Um, no, no, not light sky blue. I don't want light sky blue. I want to have uh, turquoise, pale turquoise. So that's actually uh, 175, 238, 238. There we go. So you see this is like a pale turquoise color. So that's the uh, RGB red, green, blue values um, for this this background for the sky. And so now our background says it's this light turquoise. If we actually preview it in the game mode, there we go. Kind of a colorful, happy sky color. So we don't have any other objects in here, uh, but down here's what we are using for our projects, our details. So here's our assets. We have no assets yet, but we're going to create some. We're going to actually download some from the internet. So I'll go back to Chrome here. <clears throat> We're actually going to go out to Open Game Art. So that's opengameart.org. And I'll put the uh, path in the um, <clears throat> in the download link below the video. So opengameart.org slash content slash platformer hyphen tiles. That's the uh, dash, the, the horizontal dash. <clears throat> and that's to download uh, Kenny, uh, Kenny's 2D art for a platformer game. Kenny's actually a pretty prolific artist. He's got several things to download. There's like five pages of 12, five times 12. We're looking at 60, 60 different things you can download here just from the user Kenny alone. Kenny's got a nice website. Uh, if you want, you can donate to him. But the art is actually released to public domain, which is very nice. So we can actually use it. We can, if we want, we can give him attribution. But for right now, we're just going to download the file. And you can see that I've already downloaded it, platformerart.zip. See that in my finder here. I've already extracted it as well. <coughs> so let's go ahead and uh, download it, extract it. And then go right into this folder here. This has a lot of stuff that we don't need at this level. You can read the README if you like. But there's a preview of what the tiles actually will look like. Um, just it's you can see it here on the screen in uh, Chrome. There's something like it. Like it. Um, it's it's got blocks. It's got some stuff we can use to make puzzles. Um, we can use some stuff for the background. We've got bad guys. We've got an actor we can actually use for our player. Um, this stuff's all cut up and usable for us. So if we go back to Unity, we're going to create a place to put these files, actually the ones that are in the PNG directory. We're going to create a, a place for our art assets. So I'm just going to right click here and create folder. And I'm going to call this folder Sprites. And you can call it art or icons or <clears throat> PNGs or whatever you want. But for me, this is going to be where I store all of my sprite assets for the game. So go ahead and click into there. So now we're in this, we're looking at the sprites assets folder. There's assets sprites. This actually is a directory on disk. With it selected. Come on over here and open up the PNG folder. There's all these great images that we can use for our game. And as well as uh, there's some stuff in here for a character and some enemies. So go ahead and uh, in here press Command A. And if you're a Mac user, you know that basically means select everything. And then with everything selected, go ahead and drag to get the plus sign here in your sprites asset and just drop it and let it go in there. It's going to copy all these folders into this sprite assets directory. You can see them all in here. All these great images to use. Um, 
we got this character directory here. We've got a list of walk cycles all broken broken out for us. Um, he's also got a, a version of it as a sprite sheet, but we're just going to use the individual images for this demo. Um, so we put all our, our imported. Uh, we may as well go ahead and save. Uh, first thing we're going to probably have to do is create a scenes. Let's create another folder, scenes. Scenes in this case um, is your levels. So, you know, level 1-1 one, one in Mario would be one scene. Level 1-2 would be another, etc. And you could further break this down. Like, you could have scenes for level 1, level 2, level 3, and then in there have 1, 2, 3. So we're going to go ahead and save this scene file, save scene as. We're going to expand this so we can find the folder for scenes in the assets. So here's assets, here's scenes. So we're going to open up scenes. I'm going to call this first one scene 01. And I have the naming scheme where I actually like to have um, all the digits less than 10 preceded by a zero so that when you view them in the finer window, 010203 are sorted top to bottom by name uh, before 10. So otherwise you'd have scene one, scene one, zero, scene one, one, scene one, two, all the way up till you get to scene 20, but it would actually go scene two. And that's just a detail. That's, that's a preference of mine. You can call this whatever you want. This could be main scene, start scene, beginning scene, the one scene. So I'm going to call scene 01. Go ahead and save that in scenes. And then I'm going to go ahead and, of course, save my project. So everything's set up. So we've got, if you look up here again, we're in scene 1, 2D platformer demo. And there's not much going on. Let's go down to our sprites here. So we're going to create, essentially, uh, something on the screen that looks like our player actor. So I'm going to go right to, uh, see this, this is already expanded, sprites, character, and then walk. I'm going to go right down to walk, and I'm going to use walk 0001 here. See this preview? See, it's, it's nice. It's, got this, it's all invisible in the background, so transparency is there. You don't have to see any colors in the background. We're just going to drag this up. Let's put him right on the screen, right in the scene. There he is. There's our little walker. And what are some things we can talk about? So, so he's he's at uh, this one one scale. So he's basically full size for our our screen, um, and we're going to leave that the way it is for right now. Uh, but we'll we'll add a, a block, something for him to actually uh, land on. And we'll give that, uh, we'll go in here to sprites. Let's give him a, some, some sort of ground <clears throat> that he'll be able to land on. Let's choose this ground right here. So let's go ahead and drag that out, put it somewhere below him. There we go. So kind of what we want is we want him to fall down when the, when the scene loads and land right on that block. But he's got nothing to actually do that yet. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll select him. So you can select from over here, walk, ground. So there he is. And we're going to add a component to him. We're going to give him some physics 2D. And we're going to give him a, uh, a rigid body 2D. Now he's got gravity here for one. And we're going to give him a, essentially a fixed angle. This, this basically says like he stays standing up. Like something like Rolando, you would have this character actually roll. We don't, we don't want him to roll as he lands. Um, we're going to have another component, and this is going to be a physics 2D as well, and it's going to be a uh, circle collider 2D. 
this will be basically how you can tell he's interacted with the scene. And in this case, uh, I would I would make this so that it it's a little bit smaller than that. So I'd give the radius like say a uh, I don't know maybe a 0.45, and then I would offset it a little bit so it comes down, kind of covers his feet there. Um, so let's see, we'll, we'll go uh, just a little bit of a Y, negative 0.1. That's too much. Point. Oh, no, that seems pretty good. Um, <clears throat> so basically what we have here is we have this little bubble that our guy is in. And that represents his physical outline. So that's the way the game will know that he's been interacted with. We want to add a physics 2D to this as well. Um, we'll give this a physics 2D box collider 2D. And so this just surrounds that object so that when... The game starts up, he'll have a collider, and this will have a collider, and we'll know that when the two bump. Let's go ahead and preview that. So we click on game, this shows us our scene. Thankfully that cut back on colors enough that we can actually see some contrast here, he doesn't disappear into the background. But let's go ahead and play the game by clicking this play button. There he goes, check it out. So our little dude started off in the air, and he fell down and landed on the block just the way we wanted to. So what have we done? We've created a first project. We've created some directories to hold our scenes. In this case, we've got scene one. We've created a, a directory for our sprites. We've imported a bunch of sprites that come from Kenny for open source, um, uh, public domain game art. We've imported two actors here, uh, one for our player and one for the box, um, this, this little uh, piece of ground. And uh, we've actually created some uh, gravity so that he'll fall, and we've created some colliders so that we'll know when he hits the box. So there it goes. Now it's not very exciting. <clears throat> We're going to need to add some movement because in your typical platform you're going to be able to run and jump and maybe do some double jumps and you know interact with some things, grab some coins, jump on baddies. Um, but to do all that stuff, we're going to actually have to have some, uh, some script. So this is where this tutorial is going to end. And the next step will be adding some movement and some jumping. And we'll get into how to create scripts and how to make the scripts actually control our character. All right. So see you in the next video. This is Eric also known as on GoSub, and I'll see you next time.